my good, yeah, cause he's intentional, never failing, I know that all things are working for my good, yeah, cause he's intentional, never failing, all things are working for my good. Intentional. He's intentional. Hey, and he's never failing. Never failing. All things are working well for my good. He's intentional. He's intentional. Uh, he's never failing. Never Hallelujah to the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Thank God for what has happened so far in this 46th annual F.L. Livingston Institute. Uh, we want to thank God for Elder Jeremiah Chester, who just did a marvelous job opening up this institute. Uh, we want to just thank God for all of you who are here. Uh, I want to thank God, especially for our esteemed president, Elder Duke. I want to thank God for our vice president, Elder Montgomery. And uh, we also want to thank God for the pastor, the host pastor, my pastor, Pastor Brandon Mason. And again, we just want to thank God for all of you who make up this wonderful aggregation of believers here today. Amen. Tonight we are going forward and uh, we just ask you to join in with us as we worship, as we witness, and as we leave this place to work for the Lord. Uh, tonight uh, our devotion is going to be uh, done by our National Convention Deacons and then uh, we we'll have a selection by Pensacola Citywide uh, revival choir and then we'll have our offertory plea and announcement by Elder Benji McMillan and we'll do it all in that order Amen Glory, glory Hallelujah Since I laid my Burn us down, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burn us down, glory, glory, hallelujah. 
Alléluia, c'est ça les mains, glory, glory. Alléluia, c'est ça les mains, Lord. Church say amen. Oh, he don't come from a charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, who gave his son my soul to save and fit it for the sky. To serve his present age, my calling to fulfill. Oh, may it all my power engage to do my master's will. A charge to keep. soul to save and fit it for the sky who gave his son my soul and To serve this present age, my calling to fulfill, to serve this present age. To do my master's will, oh, may it all 
have been our dwelling place throughout all generations before the mountains were brought forth even before you formed the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting you're still God Father in the name of Jesus we come as a body of baptized believers we come, Father, with thanksgiving in our hearts and yes. praises on our lips yes, because you've been mighty good to us. We, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, yes, you've been God and you've been God all yes. by yourself. Yes. We thank you, God, yes. for our last night's sleep. Oh, yes. Early this morning, you woke us with your thing of love. You allowed us to see a day we had never seen before. And Father, we say thank you. We thank you, God, because it was your grace and your mercy that has kept us this far. And it will be your grace and your mercy will lead us home. So, God, as we come, Father, we come tonight touching and agreeing, knowing that you are the only true and living God that who would take our hands and lead and guide us from one good degree of grace to another. We ask, Father, right now in your son Jesus' name that you would bless your people tonight. We come with many issues, God. We come with many problems. But we know, God, that you can do more with our problems and circumstances than we can. And so, God, we bring them and lay them at your feet. Have mercy tonight. We pray right now, Father, for this great convention. Pray, Father, that you will continue to shine your light upon each and every one of us. Search us and try us. And if there's anything that's keeping us from moving forward, that you would remove it right now. Pray for your power right now, God. Power to withstand the tricks and the, of the evil one. We pray for your power, God, that we may be able to lay hands on one another and we become whole. We just pray for your power, Father, your Holy Ghost power that will lead us, Father, the way you want us to go. Now, God, as we come tonight, we come with an expectancy in our heart. We come expecting to hear a word from you tonight, God. So, God, we pray that you would bless the man who will come and break the bread with us tonight. Continue to shine your light on him and give him powers on high that he might rightly divide the word tonight. Then, Father, we pray for this congregation waiting to hear from you tonight. Open up our hearts and our minds that we will get a clear understanding of what you have to say to us. And then charge us, God, right now to go out in your hedges and your highways, compelling dying men and women to come to you while they still have a chance. So, God, we come, Father. We come as broken pieces right now. We come, God, knowing that you can patch us all together. And then, Father, we ask, Father, that you would teach us how to love one another just the way you love us, unconditionally. Have mercy tonight. Teach us how to respect one another, God. Teach us how to bear one another burdens and to feel one another's care. We need you right now, God. We, we live in a world where men and women just won't do right. But we know that you sit high and you look low and that you're still in control. And so, God, we trust you because in your name, Father, is deliverance. In your name, there is love. 
In your name there is peace. Have mercy tonight, God. So, God, we pray for the officers of this convention. We pray for everyone in their respective places. We pray, Father, that for, for the man of this church, the one you have at this church, we pray for his church and his congregation. And then, God, we pray that you would just continue to shine your light upon us. But forgive us for our sins, God. Blot our, our iniquities, cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And then, Father, we want to be closer with to you because we want a better relationship with you, O oh Lord. So, God, we thank you. We magnify you. We lift you up. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Well, told, I'm, well, I'm, I'm the one who closing out today and put the lock on the door. So, so before I put the lock on the door, I just want to tell you what to do. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. You ought to call him up and tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. You ought to call him up and tell him what you want. If you need salvation, tell him what you want. Oh, if you need salvation, tell him what you want. Oh, if you need salvation, tell him what you want. You ought to call him up and tell him what you want. If you need your body healed, tell him what you want. Oh, oh if you need your body healed, tell him what you want. Oh, oh if you need your body healed, tell him what you want. You ought to call him up and tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. You ought to call him up and tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. You ought to call him up and tell him what you want. If you want your body healed, tell him what you want. Oh, if you want your body healed, tell him what you Oh, if you want your body here, tell him what you want. You ought to call him up and tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. You ought to call him up and tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, oh Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. You ought to call him up and tell him what you want.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Bible says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. National Primitive Baptist Convention. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. He's brought us over. He's brought us through. He's carried us. And we're excited about what the Lord has done. Let's give thanks together. Put your blessed hands together tonight. Come on, put your hands together. Oh, 
Cause you send another blessing, another blessing my way. Early this morning, you taught my body and my eyes came open one more time. And I count that a blessing. Oh, I count that a blessing. Every time I, I look around church, he sent another blessing, another blessing my way. Every time I, I turn around, he sent another blessing. I got to tell the Lord, thank you. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to save me. But I'm glad that he did. 32 years clean. I never went to a rehab center. I went down on my knees. I had a little talk with Jesus. I had a little talk with Jesus. I had a little talk with Jesus. How many of you know tonight that just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right? I thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, 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 Jesus, 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 my rock, Jesus, my shelter, Jesus, call on him, Jesus, depend on him, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus, 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 hold on to me. Jesus, send your power, send your power. Your healing, deliverance, saving, power, 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 Lord, power, power, Lord, Jesus, 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 call on him. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Cause you've been so good. Cause you've been so good. I thank you, Lord. And I praise you, Lord. What day you set? Good God, about you set? He's been a doctor. He's been a doctor. He's been a doctor. He's been a doctor. He's been a lawyer. He's been a lawyer. Oh, he's been a... Made a way. He made the... He made the... He was made. Yay! Hallelujah! Somebody ought to tell God thank you. Somebody ought to tell God thank you. Somebody ought to say thank you. He brought you from a mighty long way. Yay! Hallelujah!
We're not even distracted by that. Because right about now, somebody knows he's been a doctor in a sick room and a lawyer in a courtroom, a heart fixer. Y'all ain't talking to me. A heart fixer and a mind regulator. Anybody know he made a way out of no way? And the church said, amen. We welcome you all tonight, amen, to the 46th annual FL Livingston Institute and the board of directors meeting for the National Primitive Baptist Convention. Can we give God praise for that, amen. We honor our president tonight in the person of Elder Kenneth Duke. Can we make some noise in the sanctuary for Elder Duke, amen. Our Vice President Elder Montgomery, let's thank God for him. Amen. And our host pastor, Elder Brandon Mason, let's thank God for him. Amen. We are here tonight in Pensacola, Florida. Amen. 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 And not only do I welcome you all here in the sanctuary, but those of us in the sanctuary, let's make some noise and welcome our virtual audience who is viewing with us. Amen. That they're joining us live via our social media platforms. We thank God for them tonight. A little later on in the worship, we will have the opportunity to give, and I want to um, give us those options uh, that we'll be able to give. Uh, you can text to give any amount to 84321. We will we'll use the Givelify app, look for the National Primitive Baptist Convention logo. We'll use the Church Center app and follow the prompts and the insignia that is uh, listed therein, and the Cash app, uh, Nash, dollar sign national PBC uh, and the number one. So that's text to give, Givelify, the Church Center app, and the Cash app. God bless you, and let us continue now in worship. Amen. Thank you, uh, Pastor McMillan. I think we're ready now, amen. Uh, that's one thing that's unique about us. We know how to say thank you, Lord. We know how to give God thanks, amen. All we gotta do is think of his goodness and all he's done for us. And we began to thank him, amen. On the, uh, next we have up uh, is uh, Elder Dr. Keelan Duke of the New Jerusalem Primitive Baptist Church in Miami, Florida, and he's going to introduce to us our preacher for tonight. Come on, let's celebrate God for he is definitely worthy to be praised. Come on, you can do better than that, and you can even do better than that. Listen, we're super excited to be here in Pensacola, and we're super excited to be here at this board meeting. Super duper thanks to this wonderful church. Let's please celebrate God for this pastor and our host church. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, convention. The hospitality has been first class, and we want you to know that we're thankful. Listen, it's preaching time. How many of y'all came to hear word tonight? And uh, we're excited and delighted about the preacher who is coming forth on tonight. His name is Dr. Corey Shaw. Uh, I had an opportunity to meet him through a very dear friend of mine, Dr. George Parks, a few years ago. I had an opportunity to hear him preach a little thereafter. And I was just blown away by the amazing gift that God has placed in Dr. Shaw. Currently, he is pastoring in the Louisville, Kentucky area, the Burnett Avenue Church. I consider it to be one of the fastest growing churches in our country, not just in Kentucky, but in our country. He is one of God's best preachers, and I'm super duper thankful that we have him on our campus tonight in Primitive Baptist country. I, I often tease him. He actually has Primitive Baptist in his blood. His father uh, was a part of, I believe, a Primitive Baptist church in Nashville, Tennessee, Bethlehem Primitive Baptist Church. Did I say that right, Cole? Sure. All right, Bethlehem Primitive Baptist Church, grew up in that church, and now, obviously, we're bringing him back home to bless us tonight, and I'm excited about having him, amen, and so what we don't want to do is make the preacher work too hard, 
and uh, we're, we want to make certain that he understands that we enjoy the word, right, Primitive Baptist? We enjoy the word, right? And so I want you to do me a favor. Look at your neighbor and say, old neighbor, one thing you're not going to do is you're not going to beat me saying amen to the preacher. Come on, let's stretch our hands toward the preacher and say, preach the word, Pastor Shaw. I believe this choir is going to come. They're going to set the atmosphere for preaching. And the next preaching voice you will hear will be our friend, our brother tonight, Dr. Corey Shaw. The Bible says that not the Bible, but Jesus himself told us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father except through him. So we sing to you and we testify. We preach, we pray, we cry, we sing, all for the glory of Jesus, that he might be edified in everything that we say and do. Hallelujah, because he is the way, the only way, the only way, hallelujah. Every 
Would you posture in prayer with me? Guide me, O oh thou great Jehovah. Pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with your all-powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us until we want no more gracious God for the gift of another day we say thank you thank you for the privilege of entering your house to worship your name we thank you oh God 
for every song that has been sung, every scripture read, every supplication of the heart that has been made, every seed that has been sown. But now, Lord, it's time for the sermon, and we ask that you would do what you've done so many times before. Order our steps in your word. Challenge us, charge us, convict us, correct us, but most importantly, change us. Change us so that when we leave this place, we'll be different, stronger, wiser, more empowered than we were when we came. Don't allow anything in our minds or in our midst to prohibit us from hearing what you want to say or seeing what you want to do. Don't even let me, the preacher, get in your way, but hide me behind the consecrated cross of Calvary. Let me stand right there that your people will see none of me but all of thee. Stand up in my body, think with my mind, speak with my mouth, to the end that the scriptures be explained, that your people be edified and that Christ be exalted. And Lord, any way that you bless us, we will be satisfied. And we ask these things in the matchless and marvelous name of our Christ, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all who agreed said together, amen. amen. Allow me to take a few moments, a personal privilege, to express my joy and my utter delight to be here with you on this night. To Dr. Duke, President Duke, I give my thanks to him. He has been a model for me uh, for the entirety of my ministry. I have known uh, Elder Keelan Duke for quite some time, and I've been able to glean from his father through his stories and through his friendship and fellowship. Thank you. You are a a general for our generation. We appreciate you, sir. And we're so thankful for your leadership and for all that you're doing for the kingdom of God to vice president of this wonderful Primitive Baptist Con Convention, Dr. Montgomery, to all of these pastors and preachers, to my dear friend, Reverend Keelan Duke. I have a lot of friends here tonight and uh, so grateful to see every one of you, Elder Chester, who's leading a wonderful work there in Huntsville, Alabama. My dear friend, uh, the pastor of this church, Pastor Brandon Mason, who uh, we were young preachers in Nashville, Tennessee, running youth revivals around the same time. And uh, I never had the gifts of Elder Mason. I always wished I could shut it down like him. God gave some people all the gifts. He can sing and preach and do all of that. We're thankful to see him tonight and commend him on the wonderful work that he is doing here at the Zion Hope Church. Then my college classmate, Elder Dr. Vincent Stokes. We started at Fisk University together and finished at Fisk University. Yes, sir, we did. And I thank God for his friendship and his brotherhood down through the years. And uh, the one amen that I'm sure I'm going to get tonight, if I don't get another one, I got one that I know I can get an amen from. That is my uncle, Elder James Doc Shelton, one of my biggest supporters. He's the pastor of the Progressive Primitive Baptist Church in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. So grateful to see him tonight. My dad uh, was a member of Bethlehem Primitive Baptist Church there. His wife grew up in that church. And so my parents were divorced when I was a child. And so when I spent the weekends with my father, I ended up in the Primitive Baptist Church. So I feel right at home tonight. Things seems real familiar. There's a word that I want to lift up. The Gospel of John, chapter 21. This choir has just been outstanding tonight.
I've noticed uh, all of the songs that the choir sang were about Jesus. And I listened to the deacons as they led devotion. They were singing and praying and reading about Jesus. I hope y'all don't mind if I do the same. I just want to talk a little bit about Jesus. In the 21st chapter of the Gospel of John, the 25th verse, it reads like this. And there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. For a few moments of your time, I want to raise a question. Why can't they stop talking about Jesus? Why can't they stop talking about Jesus? I wasn't familiar with it until I saw the Facebook post of one of my dear friends and college classmates commending the satirical brilliance and the thought-provoking content, content of the presentation. So I noticed the name, took it down, did a quick Google search, read through the reviews of this movie that had just been released. That was had a lot of people buzzing about it, talking about it, wanted to see what it was all about. But admittedly, after I took note of its presence in the cinemas, I forgot about it. Till a member of my congregation texted me, Pastor, have you seen this movie? If you have, I want to know what your thoughts are. I found it interesting, and I think you would too. It was then that I knew I had to give the movie a look-see. I try to stay abreast of the contemporary conversations that are happening, but admittedly, the older I get and the more responsibilities that I amass, the more difficult it becomes. But this seemed important. So that night I ran home, rented the movie, watched it. The movie is entitled The Book of Clarence. It's a satirical, fictional presentation of a brother named Clarence. He is the imaginary twin brother of Thomas. To be clear, Clarence is not a biblical character. We have no evidence that he ever existed. However, the movie is a bit funny in that it tells the story of Clarence, who is in a tremendous amount of trouble. He owes Jedediah the Terrible a huge amount of money. Jedediah the Terrible has vowed to crucify him if Clarence doesn't pay him his money by the deadline. In addition, Clarence is in love with Jedi the Terrible's younger sister, but she won't give him the time of day because he can't even pay his debts. As the intensity of that experience began to grow within Clarence, that's when he had an ingenious idea. He had noticed all of the messiahs that were all around Jerusalem. In fact, his brother had been following a messiah. And he thought that it would be a quick way to make a bunch of money real quick if he would self-style himself as a self-proclaimed messiah. It was then that the movie hit a stroke of brilliance because you do know that historically in Jerusalem, you could find a messiah as easily as you could find a self-help guru today. There were self-proclaimed, self-appointed messiahs on every single corner. As I watched that movie, I began to think, isn't it amazing 
that the world has forgotten the names of all of those self-appointed messiahs. Yet people can't quit talking about Jesus. I turned on the Super Bowl last Sunday. And there was an ad there that a group had paid $20 million to feature doing the Super Bowl and they were talking about Jesus. And all week long, people debated whether or not that ad should have been displayed in the Super Bowl, whether that money should have been spent for that ad. But while they were debating, they were talking about Jesus. Isn't it fascinating? Some of the brightest minds of our time, atheists even, who spend their time poking holes through the Christian faith, Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens, that even as they write their polemics against Jesus, they're still talking about him. It seems that people can't quit talking about Jesus. All the movies that have been produced, all the books that have been written, all of the songs that have been performed, all of the artistic works that have been presented, all of the cathedrals and churches that have been built. People cannot seem to stop talking about Jesus. And isn't it interesting that that is the case when Jesus really should have failed? Historically. Those who are seen to and expected to have the greatest amount of success are those who have those catapulting three characteristics, pedigree, education, and wealth. Those who seem who are who who are who seem to have the greatest potential to impact the world for good are people who have those three things, pedigree education and wealth. We think about the Kennedys. They're a case study in pedigree, education, and wealth. We think about the Rockefellers who are a case study in pedigree, education, and wealth. We think about the Roosevelt's who are case studies in pedigree, education, and wealth. Yet Jesus had no pedigree. In fact, he was born to a teenage virgin in a forgotten corner of the world. He had no pedigree. He did not come from an esteemed family and say nothing about education. We know nothing about the matriculation of Jesus. In fact, we he never wrote a book like Socrates or Democrates. In fact, the only, the only place that we knew that he even knew how to write was that day when he stooped down into the dirt and he took his finger beside the woman who was caught in the very act of adultery and began to write there in the dirt and he had no wealth in fact he said of himself that foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head yet every Sunday people find his courts and every moment people utter his words and the greatest symphonies have been dedicated to him it seems that people cannot stop talking about Jesus since his birth, he has found billions of people have been uh, dedicated to his name. Since his, his coming to earth, he has amassed a following of billions upon billions. People can't quit talking about Jesus. And I wonder why that is. And the answer is right here in John chapter 21, verse 25, where John says that if all of the works of Jesus were to be written down, that the world itself would not be able to contain all of the books that would be written about him. Now understand, this is John the evangelist who writes these words. This is no planetary evangelist. No, the symbol for John is an eagle. He's the eagle-eyed evangelist. Whereas Matthew, Mark, and Luke give us graphic accounts of Jesus' ministry, John zooms out and he gives us a glimpse of glory divine. Whereas Matthew, Mark, and Luke give us very pandemic, 
everyday narratives of Jesus. John zeroes the camera all the way out and says, I want to actually show you his glory. John tells us in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. And we beheld his glory. The word dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory of God, the father, full of grace and truth. That was John telling us that before there was a who, what, when or where that there was Jesus, that he was pre-existent with God, the father. He's the second person of the Trinity. But John doesn't stop there. In the second chapter of John, John tells us how that Jesus attended a wedding one day and they ran out of wine and uh, Jesus's mother told them to do whatever he tells you to do and Jesus told them to fill up the water pots when they filled up that those water pots Jesus looked at the water the water looked at Jesus the water blushed and was turned to wine and then in John chapter 3 we see that Nick came to Jesus by night and it was there that Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. And it was there that we hear that towering theological line for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And in John chapter four, there was that woman who came to draw water. And when she came to draw water, she bumped into Jesus and Jesus told her, call your husband. And she said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, I knew that, but now I have a captive audience with you. I, do you know that I can give you living water way down in your soul? It was in John who told us about Jesus feeding the 5,000 with two piece fish dinner and five loaves of bread. It was John who told us about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead, called him by his name and Lazarus came forth like a brand new man. It was John who told us about Jesus being the bread of life. It was John who told us about Jesus being the good shepherd. It was John who told us about Jesus being the light that shone in in darkness. It was John who told us about Jesus climbing the Via del Rosa and giving his hands to nails and his feet to nails, his side to a spear and his head to a crown of thorns. It was John who told us that they took Jesus down off of that cross, placed him in Joseph's borrowed tomb. It was John who told us that he stayed there all night Friday and all day Saturday and all night Saturday night, but early Sunday morning he got up with all power in the palm of, a, of his hand. It was John who told us that he showed himself to his disciples. It was John who told us that he fried fish for his disciples on the side of the sea. But after John told us all of that, it was as if John became exhausted. He said, I've run out of words. I've run out of idioms. There is nothing more that I can say. I'm exhausted if, if we wrote everything that Jesus did, even the world could not contain the deeds. In one word, he's exhaustible. If you want to know why people can't quit talking about Jesus, it is because Jesus is inexhaustible. That is, the more you say about him, the more there is to say. The more you read about Jesus, there is more to learn. The more you walk with Jesus, there's still more distance to go. The more he gives you power, he still has more power. The more he gives you grace, he still has more grace. The more he gives you mercy, he still has more mercy. He's an exhaustible. And I ought to have somebody in this church this day who can celebrate a God that has not run out of power. We can celebrate a Jesus who still has saving power. We can celebrate a Jesus who is still sweeter than the day before. Is there anybody in here who can look back over your life and testify that the same Jesus who answered my prayers in 1988 was the same Jesus who I sealed my prayers with his name in 1998? He's the same Jesus that I prayed to in 2008. And he's the same Jesus who I can call in the midnight hour and he'll answer me. He's the same Jesus that when I cry out to him, he still answers the prayers of his people. No wonder those old deacons where I 
I come from said, I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitied every groan. Long as I live, as trouble rise, I'll hasten to his throne. Is there anybody here that's glad that we serve a Christ who's never out of forgiveness and never out of grace and never out of mercy and never out of power? He's inexhaustible. And I wish there was somebody who put your hands together and give God praise because he's inexhaustible. Keeps waking you up in the morning. Keeps starting you on your way. Keeps giving you your daily bread. Keeps food on your table. Keeps clothes on your back. Keeps you in your right mind. He's inexhaustible. So inexhaustible is he that he is bigger than the universe. He's, he's bigger than the universe. That's why I tell those people who I preach to every Sunday, stop talking about you put it out into the universe. Or you praying to the universe. Because what sense does it make for you to pray to the universe when you can talk to the God who has the universe? in the palm of his head. What, what sense does it make for you to be putting something out in the universe when you serve a God who can cause seas to die down and storms to cease and winds to stop blowing? Is there anybody in here that knows we serve a God who has the whole world in the palm of his hand? He's bigger than the universe. The universe is no small feat. Snow-capped mountains of Utah. Sandy beaches. South Africa. Galaxies upon galaxies. Stars in the womb of eternity ever waiting to give birth. Creation is no small matter. The diamond packed soil of Africa, clouds like mountains, seas vast and wide. Creation is no small matter. Yet, if creation was called upon to be the repository of the fullness of Jesus Christ. Creation would cry out, oh no, my seas are too shallow. My skies are too low. My bounds are too narrow. I can't contain the one because it was at his word that I came into being in the first place. He's bigger than creation itself. And the reason why you ought to shout right there about that is because if God is able to keep the whole world in the palm of his hands, then you know he's able to keep your little world together. He's able to keep your little life together. If he's able to ensure that the sun never stops shining and the moon is always on its job, then surely he's able to hold you together. And can I tell you the reason why I shout? I shout not because I've done all the right things said, everything that I should have said been in all the right places but when I was coming unglued he kept me together and there ought to be somebody who can testify he'll keep your mind together he'll keep your heart together he'll keep your life together is there anybody that can testify he can keep your family together that when everything is falling apart he's able to hold you together you ought to high five somebody and tell him he's been holding me together you ought to high five somebody else and tell them he's been keeping me together this whole time. And when you see me shouting, I shout because I should have fell apart. I shout because I should have been out of my mind. I shout because I should have lost it all. But through it all, 
He's been holding me. I hope y'all don't mind me talking about Jesus. He's bigger than the universe. But, but more than that, he is so inexhaustible that he transcends the Bible. Oh, I love the Bible. The Bible is the pilgrim's compass. The Bible is the believer's guide. The Bible is the word of God for the people of God. The Bible is God's self-revelation to man. Oh, I know I'm among primitive Baptists tonight. And primitive Baptists are people of the book. You, you ought to know some book way down in your heart. You ought to know some book way down in your soul because the Bible is the believer's encouragement. Oh, yes, when you are sick, you need to read that word that says, by his stripes, I am healed. When, when you are in bereavement, you need to read that word that says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. When you're feeling unworthy, you need to read that word that says, nothing shall separate me from the love of God, neither height, nor depth, nor angels, nor demons, nor principalities, nor powers. Nothing is able to separate me from the love of God. When you're feeling defeated, you need to read that word that says, greater is he that's within me than he that's in the word, world, than he that was in the world. When you feel like you can't go on, you need to read that word that says, I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. When you have enemies, you need to read that word that says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, nor thee to be enemies of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down, and wither as the green herb. Trust thou in the Lord, do well, and verily thou shalt dwell in the land. When you feel as though you can't see your way through, you need to read that word that says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art I need somebody in this house that gets your news from somewhere else besides MSNBC, Fox News, and CNN. But I need somebody who gets their news from that network that has 66 books, that network from glory that reminds us who we are. You ought to high five somebody and tell them I still believe in the Bible. The Bible is vast. The Bible is exhaustive. The Bible starts in eternity and ends in eternity. The Bible records the story of poor, failing humans from creation out of the dust of the earth through the fall to redemption, to ultimate glorification. The Bible shows us who we are in our sinfulness, but gives us a picture of who we can be through the blood of Jesus Christ. In the Bible, we see the flaming gates of Eden. Then we see the pearly gates of the new Jerusalem. I love the Bible. The Bible is exhaustive. But even the Bible can't exhaust Jesus, I mean, everywhere you read in the Bible, you 
keep bumping into Jesus. Every text in the Bible is about Jesus. The main theme of the Bible is Jesus. The biggest character in the Bible is Jesus. Everywhere you turn in the Bible is about Jesus. In Genesis, he's the seed of the woman. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he's the great high priest. In Numbers, he's the water from a rock. In Deuteronomy, he is the prophet that's greater than Moses. In Judges, he is the chief judge. In Joshua, he's the captain of the Lord's host. In Ruth, he's the kinsman redeemer. In First and Second Samuel, he's prophet, priest, and judge. In First and Second Kings, he's the ultimate builder. In First and Second Chronicle, he is the rescuer of the nation. In in Psalms, he is our shepherd. In Ecclesiastes, he is our he is the go- the meaning of life. In Proverbs, he is our wisdom. In Jeremiah, he is the balm in Gilead. In Ezekiel, he's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. In Daniel, he's the fourth man in the fiery furnace. In Zephaniah, he is our king. In in Malachi, he is the refiner's fire. In Matthew, he is he is the suffering. He is the suffering, is the, the reigning king. In Mark, he's the suffering servant. In Luke, he's the son of man. In John, he is the word made flesh. In Acts, he's the baptizer of the Holy Ghost. In Romans, he's our justifier. In 1 Corinthians, he is the firstborn of all creation. In 2 Corinthians, he's our, I wish y'all knew the Bible, he's our hospitable our hospitable host in first Peter he is the cho- is the chosen of God in second Peter he is our goal in Jude he's the one who keeps us from falling in Titus he's the bishop of our souls in Revelation he's Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end the first and the I'm just trying to tell you you bump into Jesus all through the Bible because the Bible itself can't even exalt that's why we ought to read the Bible that's why we ought to study the Bible. That's why we ought to have his word as a lamp into our feet and a guide unto. Is there anybody in here that knows before you get on Facebook, you ought to get in his book? That before you turn on the TV, that you ought to read the word of God because his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway and it teaches us about Jesus Christ. I think I've preached too long. I just want to talk about Jesus. Why can't people stop talking about Jesus? It's because he's inexhaustible. The more you talk about him, the more there is to say. The more you experience him, the more there is to experience, the more you walk with him, the more you want to walk with him. He's inexhaustible. That's why some of y'all been serving him for so long, because you can testify that the longer you serve, that he keeps on blessing you and keeps on enriching you and keeps on lifting you higher than you've been before and dipping you deeper than you've gone before. He's inexhaustible. There, there's, there's, one, there's one last thing I want to say, though. He's, he's inexhaustible not only because he's bigger than the universe, not only because he transcends even the Bible. He's inexhaustible. Because um, he deals with us. I mean, the creator of the entire universe chooses to have communion with us. The one who has held court 
with a triune God chooses to stoop low and talk to us. That a God who could stay way up there chose to came way down here and in Jesus Christ got right up next to us and then he didn't stop there. He saved us. And maybe you don't have anything else to shout about tonight. But there's a reason to shout every time you come into church. And it's that he saved us. Saved us from sin and shame. Saved us, gave us new life and abundant life. He saved us, gave us the gift of eternal life. Saved us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. He, he saved us. And now there is now for no, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, to those who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. He, he saved us and all the house some saved folk in this house this night who can give God praise because you're saved. You got a reason to shout every time you come into the doors of the church. You ain't got to shout about cars, cribs, and clothes, but you can shout because you got a soul that the angels cannot sing. I've been saved. I've been bought with a price. Oh, I remember the old church. I love that old church. That old church, they would get up and they would testify. And they wouldn't testify about carrying no Louis Vuitton bag. They wouldn't testify about driving no Mercedes or Lamborghini. They, they were not testifying about what house they lived in. But all they would get up and they would say, I got something to say. I looked at my hands and my hands looked new. I looked at my feet and my feet did too. Somebody else would jump up and testify. Oh, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Somebody else would jump up and testify. Something within me holdeth the reins. Something within me I cannot explain. Something within me that I cannot contain. All that I know is there is something within that have been around the Lord a little while. One day the Lord got a hold of me and I got my own testimony. Can I tell you my testimony? I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary. I was worn. I was sad. But I found in Jesus a resting place. And Jesus had made me glad. He gave me a song in my sorrow. He's gave me joy in the midst of my pain. He's given me hope for tomorrow. He's given me a future and a destiny. I said he's made me glad. He's lifted me above my enemies. He's given me everything I need to fight the good fight of faith. I'm glad that I've been born again. I tell you, he's inexhaustible. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. He saved my soul, but he didn't stop there. He blesses me. That's how he's inexhaustible, because every last one of us has a testimony of how the Lord has blessed our life. Is there anybody here who can testify that he's opened doors? that were closed in your face? Is there anybody here that can testify that he sealed your body? Is there anybody here that can testify that he's regulated your mind and he sealed your heart? There's been blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing, after blessing in your life. It should have been me outdoors with no food and no clothes all alone without one friend just another number with a tragic end but God didn't see fit to, to let none of those things be but every day he keeps blessing me every day he keeps waking me up every day keep food on my table. Yeah.
every day keeps clothes on my back every day makes the devil leave me alone every day guides me around the landmines of my enemies so i've got to say thank you lord for everything you've done is there anybody here that'll lift up holy hands and tell them thank you i don't deserve it but thank you i can't pay for it thank you you shouldn't have but i'm so glad you did thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you good night primitive baptist may the lord bless you real good hope you have a good rest of the meeting but don't forget take the name of jesus with you everywhere you go take that name to the courthouse take that name to the boardroom take that name to the operating room take that name to your child's room take that name down the city council take that name to the board meeting take that name to the business meeting do you know that name 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 he's a bridge over troubled waters he's a doctor in the sick room he's the rose of sharon he's the lily of the valley do you know that name he was granny's rocking chair do you know that name he's mary's baby john's first cousin elizabeth's nephew do you know the name his name is jesus 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 his name is jesus grab you somebody shake them and rock them go and grab somebody shake their hand like you've been born again shake their hand like you know him for yourself shake their hand like he picked you up turned you around place your feet on solid ground shake their hand like you loose your shackles shake their hand like you've been redeemed shake their hand like he brought you out shake their hand like he delivered you and tell them neighbor i don't know much about theology don't know much about ecclesiology but i got a name that's above every name and that's the name of jesus every knee has got a bow and every tongue has got to confess that he is lord to the glory of god the father and one of these days he's coming back for a church without spot or blemish and i want to hear him say servant The name of Jesus. We're standing all over this house tonight. There may be somebody here tonight don't know Jesus. Tonight is a good night to get to know him. The choir is preparing us. If you're here where you come, come by Letter Christian Experience. Candidate for baptism. If you're here where you come.
Don't let this moment pass you by. Come on, Saint, sing it. Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. If you don't know Jesus now, something wrong with you. <laughs> but being here lets me know that you do. And with that said, now is the time we can show Jesus just how much we care it's time for the offering the preacher has labored the ground has been tilled all is needed now is your seed let us come together and bless the lord so that we might be blessed in return. Jesus. As we prepare to give tonight, let us remember that we can give by text to give any amount to 84321. We can use the Givelify app, look for the National Primitive Baptist Convention logo, the Church Center app, and follow the instructions, and cash app, uh, dollar sign National PBC1. Amen. Now we'll turn you over to the hands of the deacons. Ushers, give us directions.
One day the psalmist realized that he needed the Lord. And he wrote something like this that said, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? He answered his own question and said, all of my help comes from the Lord. And that's all I'm going to say. Because I'm not going to let y'all set me up right now. Amen. And the church said, amen. amen. Come on, you can do better than that. And the church said, amen. Amen, amen. Here are just a few announcements as we continue through this winter board meeting. Amen. Registration for the National Convention starts 5 o'clock p.m. Tuesday, February 20th, 2024, beginning. What's the day? Today, Monday. Okay, Tuesday. Try it again. <clears throat> Registration for the National Primitive Baptist Convention <laughs> begins Tuesday, February 20th, beginning at 9 o'clock a.m. in room H204. The Tuesday lecture at 11.15, the lecture is entitled Discovering Our Uniqueness in the Community, and it will be conducted and facilitated by Elder Isaac Lane. The Tuesday evening lecture will be at 5.30 p.m. and it is entitled Tools for the Task and it will be conducted and facilitated by Elder, both Elder Jeremiah Chester and Elder Isaac Lane. Evening worship service will begin tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Uh, with Elder Dr. Keelan Duke as our guest preacher. The Board of Directors meeting will take place in the J.H. Kendrick Fellowship Hall from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. and 2 o'clock p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, please support, support our vendors located in the Grand Foyer. Also, the Berean Bookstore will open tomorrow. Uh, please go in and purchase something. Amen. I have here on the desk a devotional written by our own Elder Dr. Jeffrey T. Rainey. Amen. And it's entitled Raindrop Devotionals, Volume 4. And he says that there are limited supplies. Amen. And they're $25 each. Now, Elder Rainey... Uh, is giving a special on these. If you don't have $25, he will graciously accept $24.99. Amen. That's from Elder Je Jeffrey T. Rain at $24.99. Amen. What a discount. You got to thank God for the small blessings. Amen. All right. God bless you. Also, uh, there will be a tomorrow morning Breakfast will be at 8 o'clock a.m. Is that right, Elder? 8 o'clock a.m. There is a schedule at the hotel for the buses and for transportation. Also, board members, if you have not received your board member badge and your meal tickets, please see me uh, after this worship service. I have those for you over in the 
general secretary's office. If you meet me over there, then I will give them to you. Also, finally, there is a resource lunch, a resource luncheon tomorrow for board members. There are some tickets that are available for pastors. Amen. That are available for pastors. And the president will give instructions on how you've got to be here tomorrow to get them. I think those are amen, will be a blessing to you. Everyone else, you're invited to come also, amen. The luncheon is free, but um, it'll cost you $10 to get in, amen. All right, all right. It'll cost you $10 to get in, all right. And I think those are our announcements for this evening. It gives me great honor and pleasure tonight as the General Secretary to the National Primitive Baptist Convention to present in this session our 14th President of the National Primitive Baptist Convention. Would you all stand now and receive our President in the person of Elder Dr. Kenneth A. Duke. Praise God, praise God. Let's thank God for the word of God from the man of God. Powerful word. Amen. You fulfilled your assignment and much more. And I thank you for blessing us today. Talking about Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. Listen, we want every last one of you to register. In order for us to do great ministry, I shared on last night, ministry that is extensive is expensive. And we want to do great things for the Lord. And in order to do so, we ask all of you to register. Those of you who are in the sanctuary and those online, please take out time and register. And then even after you've registered, we ask you to please give. We thank God for our presenter today, our lecture today. Let's thank God for Elder Jeremiah Chester. He's our lead institute director. We have three directors, Elder Keelan Duke, Elder Isaac Lane, and Elder Jeremiah Chester. And I want to thank these men for working and for ensuring that we have great, a great experience in teaching and the word of God. I want to thank them. Give them another great big hand. Thank you, host moderator Ernest Williams for a great job. Thank you, host pastor Brandon Mason for a great job. Let's praise God for this choir tonight. Amen. I didn't thank our choir last night. I want to thank them as well. And I want to thank all of you for being present on today. Dr. Terrence Ford, Dr. Terrence Ford, glad to see you. Amen. That's the president. That's the president of Southern Bible Institute and College of Dallas, Texas. And that's one of our own. Let's praise God for him and his presence today. I want to invite you to join me at uh, the head table. I'm going to ask a few people to go with me. Elder Ernest Farrell, you enjoyed that preacher, didn't you? Elder Ernest Farrell is our C.L. Franklin. Amen. And you were preaching. You should have seen him. He was over there doing his thing, getting ready. Amen. Please join me at the table. Please join me at the table. Amen. My state president, please join me. Those regional vice presidents that were not with me at the head table on yesterday, please join me today. If you're a regional vice president and a state president and you were not with us on yesterday, state presidents, I see you, Pastor Russell. Won't you please join us at the head table on tonight? And we're going to have a great time fellowshipping. Host Pastor wants uh, all of us to come back and fellowship. Uh, they have a wonderful meal in store for us. Elder Chester is going to come and give remarks. And then I've, Elder Chester is going to come and give remarks and the benediction, says the vice president and the chair of our board of directors. Come well, on, bless the name of the Lord tonight. And help me thank God for this preacher again tonight. How we were blessed by the word and we are thankful for his presence and we pray safe travel to him back to his home and his congregation. It's time to go tonight. We want you to come in the morning. Uh, Pastor Lane is prepared to bless us and to equip us. And so let us come in the morning with open hearts and open ears. Let's stand all over the house. Lord, we thank you now for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hearts have felt. Thank you for the word and thank you for the preacher. 
We pray that you would pour back into him all that he has poured out to us today. Restore him as he has given us power through your word. Now give us safe travels to our destination and return us back safely in the morning. Now may the grace of our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, rest, rule, abide with us now and forever. And all God's people say it. Amen. <laughs> I know that all things are working for my good, yeah, cause he's intentional, never failing, all things all are working, things working for my good, cause he's intentional, he's intentional. Hey, and he's never failing, never 